How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be making multiple enemy health bars, which means we're going to have to make some very basic enemy AI. So let's start by taking a tiled background. I got this from the Retro Style Project by default. Let's add a solid behavior to it, which I already have done then I'm gonna kind of just design around the window size here since there's not gonna be any object, no player uh, that has a camera attached to it, no scroll to behavior. I'm just gonna use the window size because that's what our project by default will uh, kind of position us to. So let me just kind of make this. And what this is is a copy of all these tiled backgrounds with the solid behavior but this is gonna create walls for our enemy to kind of land on the floor and then bounce off these walls and flip directions. Now this is very, very basic, and I think in the future we will go over more complicated AI, but for right now this is getting the AI finished so then we can actually make multiple health bars. So here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna make a new sprite. We're gonna make it 16 by 16, and we're gonna color this anything but red because the red is gonna be the color of the health bar. And let's give it some eyes. Now when we give it detail, or when we give it anything more than just a solid color, we're setting the orientation of this, and therefore it's kind of very important that you do that, at least I think it is, because this way you actually know what way your enemy is facing, and from there you can just make it, it's a lot easier to program. Otherwise, if you, would, if you just had a blank color, you wouldn't really know. Let's call this our object enemy and let's add the platform behavior to it. Now I know you're probably thinking, why would we add that? It's the enemy. Uh, we're gonna turn default controls off and we're gonna turn the speed down to 100 and kind of that's the thing with Construct 2, you can add behaviors to things that you wouldn't have imagined in other programs. Like you wouldn't have imagined that the platform behavior, which sounds like it's for the player, can work really, really well for the enemy as well. So. There's some cool things like that and some fun tricks to mess around with, but we're gonna add the platform behavior to this and we are pretty much done. We just need to add two instance variables. We need to add a uh, direction variable and we need to add in a health variable. This health variable is going to be just like our player health bar, which is where uh, I think this tutorial kind of spawns from. I did a how to make a player draining health bar. This is gonna be an enemy draining health bar. We're gonna set this to 32 because that's what we're going to make our enemy health bar with. And just like in our player health bar video, we're gonna tie the enemy's health to the enemy health bar with. So let's do that. Let's double click and make a new sprite. Let's make this 32 by eight and let's make it red. Now, just like in the player health bar video, we're gonna take the origin point and we're gonna assign it to the left and that way it's going to drain down from the right. So let's exit out of this. Let's call this our object E health bar. And now we're ready to go. We have our enemy, it has our instance variables and we have its platform behavior and we have our health bar, cool. So let's go to our event sheet here and let's program our uh, enemy. What we wanna do is we wanna say, mm, let's add the event to our enemy on created. And when the enemy is created, in this case, we are gonna be creating multiple enemies, so this will always be applied to it. Since there's already an enemy here, it should actually uh, still trigger this event. And what we wanna do is we wanna set the direction variable. So let's go into our enemy, set the value of direction to choose between two random numbers. I'm gonna pick negative one and one. So now it's got two numbers to pick from every single time an enemy is created. And since there's already one here, it'll randomize between negative one and one. Now what we can do for our very basic AI is we can compare that, we can compare the direction to see if it equals one or see if it equals negative one. Which one does it choose? Now if it chooses one, we're gonna add the action to the enemy, to the platform to simulate control moving to the left. And because we're already facing to the right, we are going to set this mirrored to, we're gonna set it to mirrored because when you're going left, you want it to flip since we're already facing from the right. Let's copy and paste these for direction equals negative one and let's flip them. So now direction equals negative one equals not mirrored and pressing right. So now we're almost done with our AI. We have one more thing to do. Uh, if we hit play on this, and actually let me make sure that this is running on NWJS, it is. If we hit play on this, it should fall and there we go. 
but we can see here that it's going to stop right at the wall. So let's actually, first let's move this up just a little bit here. And let's actually program to detect if the enemy is by a wall. Now, fortunately, because we're using the platform behavior, it's very easy. We're going to add in an event for the enemy if we are by wall to the left. And let's copy and paste this. Let's copy our uncreated action where we're setting the direction. Instead of choosing, we're just going to set this. Since it's to the left, we want to move it to the right. And since simulating right is equal to uh, negative 1, direction equals negative 1. So let's just copy and paste this. If we have a wall to the left, then we want direction to equal 1, which means that we are uh, going to the left. Cool. Or no, this needs to be right. I was like, wait a second. Okay, so now we have our very basic enemy AI, and we can group it as such. So let's do that. And what we want to do now, and I can hit play here just so you can see this. So it's going to land, negative one, bounce off, bounce off, and there we go. So now we kind of have our very, very simple AI, and we're going to add in the functionality that we did for our player, where if we click on our enemy, the health bar will go down. But really what we want to get, the, get a hold of is when we have more than one enemy, how do we create health bars for every single enemy and how do they stand uh, stand alone essentially how are they how do they act independently that's what i was trying to say so the first thing i think we're going to do is this now we're going to pick a spot or a coordinate here 145 by 75 is what i'm going to go with and we're going to say this system every x amount of seconds so every four seconds we're going to system create an object object enemy on layer zero at oh i already forget what i said <laughs> let's go back and check another coordinate 156 by 80 that'll work kind of round it off 155 by 80 so it's going to create it pretty close to the middle of our level here and what we want to do is we want to create a for each loop now this loop is going to repeat its actions for every single instance we create. So that's really the important concept to get a hold of from this tutorial. Let's do this. Let's add the event system for each loop. And just like it says there, the actions will repeat once for each instance of this object. So for every single enemy that's created, this will, this will be run. And what we want to do is we want to make a sub event by hitting B. And we want to say system trigger once and we want to actually create our health bar for every single instance that is created. So let's system create object. We want to create our health bar on the same layer. And we want to create it at object enemy.x and object enemy.y. So this is probably the code that you were missing if you were looking for something like this. We need to make sure that this runs for every single instance that's created. And then we need to make sure that we trigger this once because otherwise it'll trigger it an infinite amount of times. We don't want that. And then we need to place it on the player. But this is going to kind of place it in the middle. So let's actually, you know, let's just hit play and let's watch this work. So when it creates, okay, you can kind of see already that it's, kind of messing up here and it doesn't look good so that's okay because we're going to come back and fix that but what we what the reason why this is happening is it's because it's triggering it but it's not actually running every tick so let's add an event system every tick let's actually set the position now of the health bar so let's type in set position and we want to take object enemy dot x and object enemy dot y but this time we actually want to we want to position it on top of our enemy. So we're going to subtract 15 from our X position and subtract 15 pixels from our Y position. Then we might as well, since we're here in our every tick, just like we did for our player health bar, we want to set the width of our enemy health bar to equal object enemy dot health, just like that. All right, cool. So let's hit play and let's see if that bug is fixed. And also what I can do here is since we're creating both of these objects, we can actually put these off the screen altogether. So let's hit play. Now we're going to have to wait four seconds for this to kind of pop up here, but it should pop up. And there we go. Now we have our first enemy. We have to wait another four seconds and there's our second enemy. Now, because we set the position, we don't get that bug anymore, but because we have that for each loop, every single enemy that is created is going to come with a new health bar. 
okay, cool. So because of that, how would we actually destroy our enemy? How would we destroy our health bar? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to add an event for the mouse and we're going to say on object clicked. If we click our player, then this is where we're going to subtract from the health. We're going to go into our enemy. We're going to uh, not set the value. We're going to subtract from our health. Now we set it to 32. Now this is where you can kind of get into your own health system, whatever your health bar system is. Maybe it's hearts, maybe it's uh, a bar like this, or maybe it's just something completely new. This is where you want to define how many damage is lost. And I'm sure there's a more complicated way that you're trying to do it. I know that I do a bunch of different ways for different bullet effects that hit the player or hit the enemy and how much damage they do. You might want to do percentages. There's so many different things you can do. We know that we have 32 hit points, essentially. We set our health... 232 we set the width of our health bar to 32 we're going to drain 32 pixels so we don't want to click 32 times if i put this to one it'll subtract and i have to keep on clicking until it gets to 32 or i'm um, sorry until it gets to zero so i could kind of cut it in half which i think is what i'm going to do just to speed things up here but you can also make it a little bit less depends on what you want to do but anyway that's the logic now if our health is equal, less than or equal to zero, here's what we do. We're going to compare that. If our health is less than or equal to zero, generally, we're going to object enemy, destroy the enemy. Now, when we destroy the enemy, that's all fine because the health bar's width is already at zero, but it's still there. That object is still there. So we actually need to put that in the for each loop as well. So let's hit B on our for each loop. And this is actually pretty cool. What we're going to do is we're going to compare the width of our health bar and we're going to actually type in compare width and we're going to find out if it is less than or equal to zero just in case it goes over. And if that is the case, then we're going to destroy our health bar. So there we go. That is how we would program this. So let's hit play. And you should see in four seconds here, an enemy will come onto the screen just like that. We have our AI running back and forth. And if I click on it, it lost 16 health, and if I click again, they're both destroyed. So because we have that for each loop, it'll target every single instance, and it'll actually single it out rather than having it act as a whole group, because these are duplicates of the same object, but because they're instances, we're able to actually pick them out and program for them individually as if they were individuals, essentially, as if they were just independent objects, which is really, really cool and really, really powerful. So I hope that this has kind of made this a lot easier for you. It kind of showed off some basic AI, and we also showed off just an easier way to bring in uh, for each logic into your brain. So hopefully this has helped a lot. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. And as of this video, I hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So that's really awesome as well. And thank you for helping me get there. I really just can't see where, uh, I really can't wait to see where this channel goes. So thank you so much for everything, subscribing to this channel. Uh, if you have any ideas for future tutorials, please send me a tweet at JaraMentor or comment below. If you did like this video, please share it and give a thumbs up. That'd be really cool. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander, and I'll see you next time.